Well, physicians still have a role in medicine, isn't that right, David? <laughs> I, 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 I hope so. <laughs> Dr. David Dodson has offered the very best primary health care in this region. He's a graduate of Cornell University Medical College and completed his internal medicine residency at Pennsylvania Hospital in Philadelphia. He completed a fellowship in infectious disease at Yale New Haven Hospital and worked at the Yale Tropical Medicine Clinic. He's double certified in internal medicine and infectious disease. And he has served the St. Mary's medical staff as chief of staff and as chief of staff at Intercoastal Health Systems. He has appeared on many <clears throat> uh, TV and radio interviews and uh, was recently named top doctor by South Florida Magazine. Currently serves on the board of directors of Palm Healthcare Foundation and Foundcare. David, we're eager to hear from you. Thank you, Mike. Well, I appreciate the opportunity of being here. Um, I was also told I have about six minutes to talk about a lot of stuff, and I promised Mike I'd speak quickly. Bear with me. What I'd like to do in the next few minutes is to talk about, is to step back and sort of look at what are, what is, what are the goals of a healthcare system in general. I mean, all nations face this problem, and we have our own ways of dealing with it. Uh, other nations have different answers. Second, I'd like to talk about the uh, snapshot of what's going on in the U.S. healthcare system right now and how ACA is going to affect it. Uh, third, uh, I would like to speak about concerns that doctors have. We're, we're kind of the boots on the ground, the, the, uh, the grunts of this whole uh, health care war, and doctors have a lot of concerns. And finally, I'd like to talk, uh, say a few words about the physician patient relationship as, as this process that's in, uh, in transition uh, moves forward. First, the goals of a health care system. Well, um, I mean, why do we have health care system? Well, the, the, the short answer is that um, uh, no nation can survive and succeed without a healthy working population. We have to have it. And so um, we have to figure out how to get there. And different nations have taken different paths. Um, the, the truest thing I've heard about health care systems is that you can have universal coverage or you can have access to high technology or you can have uh, a speedy care, but because uh, uh, monies are limited, you have to pick two of those. And we have chosen in this country access to high technology and speedy care, but we have left off universal coverage. And we talk about ourselves as proud Americans, but how can you be proud when um, one out of five of your fellow Americans doesn't have any health care coverage? And when those people don't have health care coverage, they die earlier. They have a higher mortality. They also, um, their cost, their, their health care is more costly. It is cheaper to take care of a patient in a doctor's office than it is in an emergency room. That's the, the highest uh, cost center of, of taking care. So, um, how do you get to what you? How do you get to a healthy population? Well, what, what is? What are the characteristics of a of a successful healthcare system? Well, I think that one of the characteristics should be universal coverage. We should cover all of our all of our uh, citizens in the country. Number two, we should have excellent healthcare outcomes. There should be uh, life expectancy, decreased mortality, decreased infant, infant mortality. If you look at the statistics for the United States healthcare system now, we rank down there with third world countries. We're 23rd in, uh, in life expectancy. We're, you know, we're right between Uzbekistan and Tobago. It's, ri it's ridiculous. Um, we should have reasonable costs. We have to have reasonable costs because we cannot afford the path that we're on. And the final uh, characteristic is we should have high patient satisfaction. Patients should be should, should like their health care system, be, uh, uh, um, be comfortable with it. Um, the number one cause of personal bankruptcy in the United States right now is medical care costs. That does not happen in other countries. Why we do this to ourselves, it's, it's a self-inflicted wound. So to get to universal coverage, excellent health, health outcomes, reasonable costs, and high patient satisfaction, different countries have taken different paths. Early on, some of the European countries started off with, we will ensure all of our, all of our people. And then they have evolved different systems. The British said, we're going to do it by nationalizing health care. And in Britain, all the doctors and the hospitals are basically government employees. Canada pays for it by um, providing money to independent contractor doctors, but they 
provide so much and then that's it. Other countries in Europe, uh, Switzerland, France, Germany, they have insurance companies, but the difference is that the insurance companies in European countries are not for profit. And so when you take away, and, and I think that the for profit, um, in the, when you get right down to what people don't like about the healthcare system, it, the root cause is the for profit insurance industry. That's what tells you that you can't have a CAT scan, you can't use this medication, you can't order this test because those are uh, they're trying to decrease costs for the insurance company. So uh, when you look around at different countries, what country kind of meets the best, the best of those goals? Well, um, I'll, I'll cite Switzerland as an example. Switzerland has universal coverage. It has excellent health care, health outcomes. Their, their statistics are right at the top of the charts. Uh, their costs are reasonable and uh, the patients are very satisfied. And basically their model is that the government has tight restrictions on insurance companies and then the health care goes from there. And that model basically is what Massachusetts adopted in 2006. And that model is now what uh, the United States has adopted in 2010. So that is, is sort of a broad um, overview of health care systems. Now the U.S. health care system, and there are some particulars here that we have to be aware of and deal with. Uh, right now, there are about 700,000 doctors in the United States to take care of 315 million people. About 50 million of those are uninsured. About 17% of our population has no health care insurance, insurance whatsoever. There have been trends in the U.S. economy uh, from 1950 to now. Uh, in 1950, um, the health care expenditures were 4.6% of our GDP. Now they're 17%. They're most industrialized countries, uh, their percentages are between 9 and 11 percent of their GDP. So right now in the United States, we pay a lot more and we get a lot less. We don't insure all our people and our health care outcomes are not as good. The per capita expenditure in 1950, uh, each of us, each individual citizen paid about $406 out of pocket. Now the per capita expenditure is 6807 so the costs have gone up for all of us. And where does this money go? Well, if you look at all the, the bar graphs, uh, the, there's a ratio of about $3 goes to the hospital, $2 goes to the doctor, $1 goes to drugs, and then there's a proportion of a dollar that goes to other stuff. And that proportion has really held from 1950 to 2009 has held uh, roughly the same. Uh, as costs have gone up, the perceived and the real need for health insurance has gone up. That's why it, in, back, in the, back in the day, uh, I guess docs used to get paid in, uh, in goats and cheese and eggs and good stuff like that. And now 90% um, now of the health care costs are by third party insurance of so some, some form or the other. Um, there's been an increased number of physicians in the United States. Um, from 19, in 1950, there were 1.4 doctors per 1,000 patients. Now there are 2.7 doctors per 1,000 patients. So the proportion of doctors has gone up. But over the last few decades, there's been a change in the physician workforce. Um, the number of women has gone up, and I, I'm not being sexist here, but the fact is that women have uh, other responsibilities in, in, in their families, and they cannot work the long hours that the doctors of your used to work. Um, there is increased specialization so that the, uh, a lot of there's a lot of financial incentives right now for a graduating uh, medical student to go into specialties rather than primary care. And th th now we're seeing the trend where we're seeing hospital-based physicians. There may evolve a model where there'll be inpatient doctors and there will be outpatient doctors. That may be part of the end game here. And we've also seen an explosion of technologies that we have to deal with. Right now, doctors can um, have a choice of 6,000 different drugs to prescribe and 4,000 different procedures, stuff that we can do to you all. <laughs> but the, the problem here is that for the first time, um, we have pieced together this healthcare system in the United States by, by adding elderly and and poor with Medicare and Medicaid. We had worker employer based insurance. We've had other groups like pregnant women and kids. But there's been no uh, systematic rational approach to think about how to finance, organize, and deliver our care. 
And for the first time, I think we're actually going to have to think about those issues. Now, what are physicians' concerned, uh, concerns? Um, first of all, um, and, I, and I, I, I think most physicians share this, uh, I'm basically happy that this happened. It's about time. I've been ashamed that uh, uh, to be a, a part of a healthcare system that doesn't cover one out of every five of our citizens, I think there are good parts of this. Uh, uh, from a moral and ethical standpoint. We should take care of our, uh, the rest of our citizens, and we will. And also, it's just simply clinically more efficient. When you take care of problems earlier, they, they are less expensive than if you leave them to end up in an emergency room. So as time goes on and we evolve our health care system, some costs will go down. Now, um, the bad part, uh, and I've talked to a lot of docs, a lot of docs are not are, are against this, to be <coughs> quite honest. Um, part of the concern is that right now we have a limited uh, and finite capacity of primary care providers, and I would define those as internists, uh, family practitioners, physician assistants, nurse practitioners. The, the, those, those people do the primary care. And we're already uh, facing um, an increased demand from an aging population, obesity, diabetes epidemics, and now we'll have 32, more mil 32 million more new insured people who will also be demanding uh, primary care. The average panel size of, of an average primary care provider in the United States right now is 2,300 patients. The average doc takes care of about 2,300 people. Um, and now we're expecting the, uh, the number of, of that number to go up. Now what's that going to lead to? It's going to lead to, um, I think, decreased patient satisfaction. We have to worry about increased wait times to see your doctor, um, and some doctors may end up closing their panels uh, because they physically cannot take care of anymore. Um, and from a physician standpoint, um, we're going to have less time to spend with each individual patient. And that's going to lead to increased burnout, trying to satisfy this, this increased demands. Now, the good part of the prime, of the uh, of ACA is that uh, there are specific provisions in the law that provide for increasing uh, primary care providers. There will be uh, payments of, of student loans if you uh, per if you practice in some underserved areas. There will be more nurse practitioners. There will be more physician assistants. So. Over time, the, this mismatch of primary care and demand will eventually be sorted out. Um, but for, there's going to be a pinch for the next few years. Uh, physicians are also worried about um, decreased autonomy. There's going to be increased bureaucratic oversight. Um, we have uh, regulations to deal with, and there may be limitations of medications and procedures that we can uh, prescribe. There is going to be an increased uh, administrative burden. The law uh, has specific requirements of documentation that we have to meet. Um, they, we, we were told that we had to have EMRs, and uh, I, my partner and I bought an EMR, and the cost is on us. The government hasn't given me one cent. So just as you face upfront costs, so do we. Um, and ACA did not eliminate this uh, uh, sustained growth formula. This is the thing that Congress passed about a decade ago that says the, the physician payments are going to go down about 2% a year, but each year they say, no, we won't do that and we'll keep on going. So right now we're up to 20%. If Congress doesn't do anything, all of a sudden all the doctor reimbursements will go down immediately 20%. Unsustainable. How do you keep a business going? But they'll probably kick the can down the road, and so next year we'll be worried about 22%. Um, I also worry about patient privacy. There's all these requirements that uh, we give all this data to the government, but uh, all of your records will be accessed, and I have yet to see uh, somebody who can tell me that there is a hack-proof system uh, to, to guarantee privacy. And uh, the final, and another thing that I'm uh, worried about is that uh, ACA does not um, provide any relief of uh, any any tort for, tort reform. There's no relief of tort li liability. So we're all going to be asked to do more with less, and we're going to be held accountable if anything goes wrong. And I guess the real thing that I'm concerned about is that when you take a, a grad uh, the best and the brightest, people are graduating uh, uh, college right now, and you say, okay, well, you can go to medical school, and by the time you're 
graduating medical school, your average debt will be $150,000, and then you can now be a doctor and practice in an environment where people are telling you what to do, they're cutting your salary, they're giving you administrative uh, burdens, and they're uh, making, a, making life in general difficulty. I, I really, the real concern I have about all this is that the best and the brightest in the future won't choose uh, physicians as a, as a career, and that will be a loss for all of our society. And the final thing I want to talk about, and I think I'm still on time, Mike, is the, the physician-patient relationship. Um, as this stuff was all um, coming down, I, I, I just found it so curious that um, it was all being developed with so little input from doctors who actually have to in, implement it. We're, we're kind of the first-line troops. And that, um, that disparity is kind of... Uh, you can figure it out a little bit because the ACA is really a health insurance system. It's not a health care system. And there's a subtle difference because the health insurance system is what pays for the health care system. A lot of time the health insurance dictates what we do, but there's a subtle difference. And it all comes down to, to still the doctor and, and the, the, the physician and the patient are still the, the coin of the realm of any health care system. And, Doctors must advocate for their patients. They must say that we have to cover, we have to make sure that patients get good care. But I would also ask you to advocate for your doctor. Because if we get screwed, in the end, you're going to get screwed. We're all in this together. So as this whole thing evolves, um, we have to keep a close eye on it and have input into it. And so, so we end up with, a, with a, a system that we can all live with. And then I, the final thing I have to say is that um, there is an element in our healthcare system for personal responsibility. We have to stop being fat. We have to stop being, having all these other uh, diseases that come on because when you add the healthcare of one plus one plus one, eventually you get to 315 million. And if we are all healthier, then the burden on our healthcare system is less. And that's all I'm going to say about that.